Welcome to CNS Focus series of interviews from 5th International Conference on Family Planning from Kigali, Rwanda. Every year, an estimated to 21 million girls aged between 15 to 19 years become pregnant and approximately 16 million girls of the same age group give birth in the developing world. Not just unintended pregnancy and childbirth in under 19 girls is alarmingly high, but the rates of sexually transmitted diseases, including HIV, is also equally alarming in this age group. Today, we are in conversation with a noted public health expert, Claudia Remo, Program Manager at Visa. Thank you, Claudia, for joining us today. Could you just tell us um, a bit about this Rise Up campaign? Rise Up is uh, an organization that believes in the vision and the power of local leadership. We've worked with over 500 local leaders all around the world, mostly in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. And we provide our champions or our social entrepreneurs the capacity building, the leadership support, the resources, and the opportunities that they need to be able to scale their work that already has great impact. So we believe in the vision of local leadership and we are just enabling them to do really great work. We are currently recruiting for our third group of youth champions for our Youth Champions Initiative. And it's a really interesting, innovative, exciting group of people that we've trained over the past five years and actually you are one of our champions from India and we're having the third cohort and we're currently looking for new members of our group, new champions. So call for applications are open as of last week and we will be accepting applications until the 28th of February from youth from India, Pakistan, Ethiopia, Rwanda for the first time and the US South. So we're really looking forward to getting tons of applications and this is a great space also to share that call for applications with you. So Claudia, as you know, young people demand uh, the sexual and reproductive health services for education, information. Uh, what are the, some of the barriers and challenges that need to, to be addressed uh, in order to ensure that you have the uh, accessibility to your community-based research or information services and education, uh, particularly uh, among uh, the young girls and women uh, in the different world. We have worked for over 10 years in Central America, Africa, Asia, and we have seen that particularly girls and youth have the same challenges or similar challenges across the world. And namely, there are two main ones. They have a lack of access to accurate medically um, evidence-based information and sexual education. So we're talking about truly comprehensive sexual education for girls and youth, both in and out of school. And second, youth have a really hard time accessing medical services and truly youth-friendly medical services that are welcoming to them and that are respectful to their stories, their experiences, their context and their cultures. Are there any best practices to improve uh, sexual and reproductive health program outcomes for young people? If so, please do share with us. I'm really glad that you said practices because it is indeed plural. Evidence has shown that there's not one thing that works in all cases and all contexts. So for example, if you talk about comprehensive sexual education in schools, that alone won't drive or won't be the main driver of decreasing rates of adolescent birth rates, for example. So we really have to look at it as a comprehensive approach, a comprehensive strategy. That it goes from comprehensive sexual education to in schools, targeting also out of school youth and girls. We're talking about it being medically accurate. Um, peer education is key, is very important. Youth leadership is important. Accessing information that's outside of a, a context of maybe educational modules or an actual course on sexual education, and that's just talking about the information piece. And then th the second part is accessing the services. So when are services truly impactful is when they are really high quality, when they are youth friendly, when you feel like they can come 
to a health center or a health post and get the information and the services that they need and the birth control and the methods that they need and also be able to, if they choose not to have a child, have other options as well. So I think that it, it has to be a strategy that encompasses all of those and that's really the what the evidence tells us that improves. Um, if you want to look up more information, there's a really interesting High Impact Practice Brief published by the IBP Initiative on Adolescent, what works and what doesn't work in adolescent sexual health. And that can be found on the IBP website. Sir, HR information uh, um, and education are key to protect the young people from sexually transmitted diseases and also from unintended. What uh, role does the civil society organizations, faith-based organizations, and uh, leaders and people's networks can uh, can play in order to ensure that youth have the uh, accessibility, universal access to SRH services and education. We all have a role to play and we do all have to contribute to it. And it's not only in filling the gap that perhaps our governments are not able to fill. So it goes beyond opening a clinic or a nonprofit clinic and offering birth control or opening a youth friendly clinic at a hospital, it really has to go beyond that, beyond filling the gap. And that's why at Rise Up we believe in holding governments accountable and that's a big piece of what we do. We support our fellows or our champions to be able to take on advocacy strategies so that they can on the ground be able to have a say and raise their voices and demand their local governments for better programs that improve the access to girls and youth information and services and policies that will ensure that their human rights are being respected, laws that make sense and are at par and in, in agreement with international policy and also towards FP 2020 goals and SDGs. There are I think uh, um, 600 plus young leaders from uh, more than 24 countries uh, participating in this ICFP 2018 conference. Uh, how this conference is going to build up the movement for the uh, young people to have a child child, services and education? It's really great that there's so many youth. It's the, the youth free conference that has the, the greatest number of participants. And that's, that's fantastic. And I think it's a great space for mainly two things. Two things, connecting with people at networking with you who are doing maybe similar work that we are in a different context, in a completely different country with different circumstances and that perhaps some of the things that they're doing are yielding really great results. So how do we translate what happens in one place to another? Maybe those conversations spark an idea, oh, maybe I could do this differently. Not necessarily to completely you know, transfer a program from one place to another, but to really share lessons learned from the field and from different contexts, I think it's really really key. So more, more than perhaps the actual material and content of the Youth Free Conference, I think what's most important and valuable are the connections that are made between people so that it can network, so that it can contribute, so that it can share what works. Are we on track to meet the FP 2020 um, goals and uh, 2030 goals uh, uh, on for sustainable development related to youth as well? I think we are. And today is the launch of the FP 2020 annual report, so I'm really looking forward to reading it. Last night I went online to see if maybe they had posted it, but not yet. It's coming out today, so I'm really looking forward to reading that. And in terms of the SDGs, we are making a lot of progress, especially for SDG 3, that concerns health and specifically youth health, the indicators that talk about um, youth SRH specifically. In over the past decades, we have made great progress. Maternal death is, is down, maternal mortality, so is under 5 um, mortality rate. Adolescent birth rates are going down. Incidence of HIV is also going down, so I think we're making really great progress. But there's still a lot to be done, so we should just continue learning from the field, collaborating, working together, and those changes we, we will see. So hopefully we will achieve them by then. What is your message for, um, from ICFP uh, for the young people? I want to encourage all youth to get outside of their comfort zone, to ask difficult questions, 
to challenge their beliefs, to challenge other people's beliefs. I think those conversations and spaces like this one where there's people coming from such different contexts and experiences, religions and, and everything that you can possibly imagine, sexual orientations, it's a great space to think about yourself and your position and even your own ideas and perceptions about life and the field and start asking yourself difficult questions, start asking other people. And that's the best way to, to grow and continue your leadership. It's by challenging your, yourself to think differently. Thank you so much, Claudia, for sharing your valuable heart with us today. Uh, friends, we were listening to Claudia Ramos, Program Manager at RISA. Uh, for more information, please be welcome to the CNS website www.citizen-news.com.